Welcome back to Dr. Michael. LMC. Jeez, it's just astounding. And I don't know. I shouldn't complain about it, but I, I'm going to because... Because you want a lot of hateful comments on there, don't you? <laughs> well, that's the thing. I'm not inviting people to rain righteous indignation down on me because I'm aware that serial killers are almost always guys. I'm aware that people that start wars are guys. I'm aware that Cain Rapist. was a guy, you know? Rapists are usually guys. Most guys with penises are, are men, yeah. Yeah, and, kill and it. So it, it, if, if there was not such a thing as rape, if there wasn't such a thing as, as you know, as a corrupt a father that molests his kids and all that stuff, then I guess we wouldn't have words in the English vocabulary for this and we wouldn't have movies made about it. I'm not saying that this stuff doesn't exist, but it just the, the, the broad strokes with which the, all men are painted – it's upsetting and it's frightening and it's disturbing. And in this culture where I've grown up, men are just shits that are going to try and do stuff to you, young lady. And this is what a man wants. And this is why you can never trust him. This is why you can never open your heart to a guy. And dude, that's just toxic for the development of a young woman is yeah. to tell him that this is – But I had a friend. He got married to this woman who had a, a, a six-year-old girl. And she was super, super into like the CSI type shows and go on to the History Channel and uh, or Discovery Channel or whatever channel that would have like their true crime hour and stuff and just watch about, you know, it's like he filled the bathtub with acid and dropped the woman in, you know, stuff like that. And she had just shelves of these kind of forensic books and serial killers of the last 20 years. And there, there was a Time Life series about serial rapists. She had collected the whole thing, which is fine. People can be into what they're into. But she had this six-year-old girl, and she would tell the girl that this is what men would do, and this is what men were like, and this is why you must never get into a car with a stranger, or this is why you can't walk home from school, or this, you know, things like that. And dude, it horrified me. It freaked me out to the point where I was just like, no, that's going, dude, oh, geez, she's going to be in therapy for the rest of her life. <laughs> And You've Kevin, too the, far with this the protect guy, your child thing, right? The guy that married her, I, I don't think he felt quite as strongly about it as I do because you know, obviously, he loved her and that. But he was just like, oh, "Gosh, I wish I, there was something I could say." But this is not my daughter. Her real dad right. is out there, and so you know, I, I don't want to overstep my bounds and all that stuff. But oh, geez, the stuff that she would say was awful because it wasn't just there are bad people that might do bad things to you. It's like, no, they'll put their dick in you. They love that kind of stuff. They see a little blonde girl like you, and that's what they want. Oh, they want your panties and stuff. And I'd be like, oh, how am I hearing this? I, I, I'm not related to you. I shouldn't <laughs> be hearing I mean, what kind of stuff do you say when I leave? Wow. And, and, and you were saying that we lived in an, in an effed up world. Is it that effed up that we need to go that far? And you have daughters. I do. Maybe your perspective's totally different. Maybe I'm completely crazy. To have not wanted to say this to my nine-year-old niece, but give me the other side of why this would be okay or why this would be not damaging to a little girl. I think it probably would be damaging, to tell you the truth. I mean, there's a certain level you do have to teach your children about. You do have to teach them what to do and how to avoid dangerous situations and stuff like that, but constantly harping on it and getting into graphic detail, I don't know that that's something that's going to help. In any way, because what is the percentage of someone that actually is going to find themselves in that situation? I don't know what it is, but I don't think it's so high that you need to damage your child's psyche trying to teach them what to do. You know, you get them in the rad kids program so they know how to kick somebody in the crotch if he tries to abduct them or something. But when it comes down to it, 90 something percent of child abductions and things like that are from people that the kids already trust it's a like a, a family step member. parent or a family member or whatever it's something like that that it comes from so you know you have to teach them to understand that yeah this is not okay when somebody wants to do this but uh it seems like you got to draw the line somewhere so that you don't turn your child into a completely i don't know what kind of phobia they would have they would develop from this but i'm sure there's something some kind of uh, a serious mental illness that they would probably fall into if you were too over the top scaring them 
with what the world is like out there sometimes. You know, the world is effed up, like I said before, but we still got to live there. You still got to live. You still got to go on with your life, whether it's effed up out there or not. You got to find a way to balance it all, you know, and I don't think that's the way, but that's just me. Yeah, I, I, I'm realizing as we're talking about this that this is in no way funny. <laughs> and I think the intent of this podcast was to be funny. It's it's just vexing because, you know, I, I'm a guy that tries to do good. I'm a guy that tries to do right. You know, I'm not married. Uh-huh. So I'm I'm still, you know, out there hoping to be someday. And, you know, I, I appreciate that girl not saying, no, I'll, I'll walk. You know, and slamming right. the door in my face or whatever. Assuming Maybe. that you are the rapist after all, when you really aren't and you hate to be painted with the broad stroke. But, you know, maybe when she got home, one of her roommates told her that she was stupid for taking a ride with a, a guy, let alone, you know, I, I don't, I guess you could say strange guy or with somebody that you don't know she very wasn't well, related to or whatever. But uh, it, suppose that you were, that you did have a bad experience. It seems like that you would ruin your life just as much by ha- having that paint every future experience and every person that you meet, thinking about that and and, and equating them all together. Uh, there are good people out there, people that would never ever dream of hurting a child or or, or a stranger, and uh, and they want to be able to help you out. You know, you get a flat tire on the side of the road, and isn't it a nice thing to pull over and help this person while the sleet is falling in their face as they try and twist the lug nuts or whatever and they can't manage to get it to go and you come along to try and help them out and they're just like okay uh, and they mace you in the face or something like that it makes it hard to be a good person because of all the bad people that you have to protect yourself against it's not funny at all it's a sad sad thing one time back in la uh i was driving home from work and there was a guy who I guess his car it was broken down or, or something. I, I never found out what the situation was, but he was walking on the side of the road. And he was walking toward Fox Studios. And as I drove past, I realized that I knew who he was. He was a movie director slash actor. So I turned the car. I did a U-turn and came up beside him and rolled my window down and said, Mr. Fill in the blank. Uh, do you need a ride? And he's like, oh, no, my, you know, my car is just up the way. And I was like, are you sure? Because I'll, I'll give you a ride to your car. And uh, the whole time I was just like, wow, if I give this guy a ride, I'll have a story that I'll be able to tell. <laughs> uh-huh. Won't that be cool? And, and he said no. And, you know, I was like, okay, you sure? You know, it's like, oh, yeah, it's just, you know, another eight miles <laughs> through Compton. And I was like, okay, well, hey, you have a good middle of the night. And I drove away. And I was just like, shoot, that would have been a really cool story to tell. And then I wondered, well, maybe I ruined that by saying Mr. and recognizing it and saying it's that I knew who he was. You know what I mean? That he's right. like, oh, no, you know, he's this like, guy oh, knows great. who I it's want. A stalker. Right. And he, he, he knows that I'm a famous person. He's going to want money or he's going to you know, want to hold me for ransom or he's going <laughs> to want one of my testicles or something like that. And yeah, it's just one of those things. It's not like the great regret of my life, but I, I just always thought, oh, that would have been a cool story. It's a shame he didn't get in my car and I give him a ride home and say, hey, I'm a fan of yours. You have a good life. Ghostbusters was cool. Didn't happen. But, you know, hey, I got to give this girl a ride home and. She didn't mace yeah. me. Have you ever been maced? <laughs> Just with one of those maces that like the knights used to use, the, the, the ones with the ball with the spikes on the – just that one. That That's the only time I've been – You had it coming. That modern day mace, not so much. You were Just trying the, to pillage <laughs> the town. It was it – was, Yeah. Good was thing I was wearing that big helmet because that could have really hurt. Those spikes on those balls can be sharp. It took me like a week to get it out of my helmet. Shoot, we've been talking for a long time, and so I should bring it to a halt, but I'm not going to. Okay, so so the media portraying men as, as a-holes, uh-huh. going, going back to that subject. Unless you wanted okay. to talk more about being maced by the Black Knight. I think we've gone far enough with that. Something that I've seen in countless movies. Countless. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, if we want to sit down for an hour, I could come up with 20. Is where there's a guy and a girl... And then we want them to get together. It's almost always a romantic comedy. Uh-huh. But she's already got a guy. And that guy is a d- 
douchebag. <laughs> and they're living together or they're engaged or they're boyfriend and girlfriend or they're high school sweethearts or she's her husband, whatever it is. His last name rhymes with her first name. What? Oh, Julia Gulia. <laughs> and he's just a tool, uh -huh. man. And so, of course, we want our protagonist to get together with her and we want them to be happily ever after. And we want her to drop this dude and get with the hero. And uh, But, oh, wow, almost every time I see this in a movie, I think, what is she doing with this giant a-hole? Uh-huh. You know, what is she doing with a bully or what is she doing with a, you know, a coke Dude. snorting drug dealer or what, you know, what is she doing with that gigantic tool uh -huh. it, to the point where I, I think about it and I th say, you know, that says something about her character, right? That she would be sleeping with this nut job or this <laughs> fuck wit or whatever it might be. You know, it, you, it, it's very rare. That the other man is a nice guy. Yeah. Because they want to demonize him. We want him to yeah, be left at the altar or at the curb or dropped out of an airplane or whatever it might be. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to think of some of those uh, where they're not that way. Oh, I'm sure you could come up with one or two, two is what I can Or, you know, on, on one hand. And now, this one is kind it's not quite that way because it's actually a girl that it's the. There's the girl that's trying to steal the man from a different girl, and the other girl is not the bad person, and that is uh, my best friend's wedding. That's the one completely opposite example. And I think in the end, and spoiler alert, in the end they uh, don't get together, and the guy stays with the original girl. Which I thought which was, was pretty unpredictable. Yeah, I thought that, that was, was cool that they turned that uh, trope that's a real word, right? <laughs> they turned that on its head and did it, you know, made it end. Yeah, but we're we're not talking about the girl, is, right. you know, kind of thing. The other that, one that's that... a different thing. Uh, this is the boyfriend, right. the husband, the fiance, the lover. Kind the of other thing. one that I could think of was uh, liar liar, where where Carrie El was. He isn't a total douchebag or anything like that. A complete tool. Where you're saying, what in the hell? He's just a dork. Is really nerdy guy, not somebody that's going to make you think, oh, I love this guy. Or he's just someone that you could easily throw away and not feel bad about. Just like Carrie Elwes as an actor. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, that's an interesting one. I don't think we ever see what happens with him. We just jump ahead to the next year and he is back with his, his ex-wife. In the deleted scene, he leaves the airport and this totally hot chick with huge bazooms is like, hey – do you know how to get to the video store? And each gets in and shows, and then they do it two years later, and it's a bow chicka bow bow moment. Good stuff. Carrie Elwes actually comes out ahead in that one. Are you lying? Is this actually? Yes, I'm completely making oh, this up. Oh, okay. That's funny. <laughs> You're looking at me like, oh, really? I didn't see these It's like, why extras. would they do that? It's I listened to the commentary and everything in this movie, and I, I don't remember that. The only one that I could think of was Sleepless in Seattle. Uh, she's with Bill Pullman. And yeah, he's just boring. You know, she doesn't feel the spark or whatever with right. him, which is not a criticism of the film, but it's just like, okay, well, if you've been with a guy for a long time, that spark is going to go away. Of course, you got a spark with a guy you've never even met. That, you know, you fell in love with the voice of the, I, I don't know. I, I guess I've got issues with Sleepless in Seattle. It's got Rosie O'Donnell in it. <laughs> But oh. nobody ever questions the judgment of these women to be with a guy who's a monster, right? A guy who's got you know fourteen other women, a guy that beats her, and and things like that. You know, stuff like that. It's just uh, there. There was a moment in the Expendables. Is that what it was? The the Stallone flim fil, flim the flim flam film the, the Stallone, Stallone film in. from early this summer where uh, Jason Statham had this woman and he goes to her house and she's with a, uh, she's got a new boyfriend. She's moved on or whatever. And this guy is such, such a, give me a word. He's such a nozzle, this guy. A nozzle. And that's a new one. So of course, Jason Statham just cleans this guy's clock and just beats him until, you know, there's nothing left. And then I guess, cause it was so poorly handled in the theatrical cut. Uh, he dumps this girl because she went to this guy instead of staying with him. Uh, we we don't know, but uh, I was just like, oh wow, that's interesting, because clearly he did question the 
integrity of this woman who for getting together with this this asshole or you know a non Jason Statham character. But shoot, why am I still talking? Oh. Well, hey, hey, I don't know why I'm still talking. <laughs> this may be one of the episodes that no one ever hears. Is there such a thing? I always assumed your ego was enough that you would never allow that to happen. <laughs> well, I don't know. We had that episode, that the one of Liz's story, where we were worried about offending people, about bothering people's sensitivities uh-huh. and... This is and Liz like said, that. Liz said, well, just shelf the episode. I don't mind. I was like, well, uh, yeah, but hours of work uh-huh. and it's your story. I guess I, my mind doesn't work that way. It's like, well, we recorded it. We uh, might as well put it out. But I hope we don't have all sorts of people hating us again for doing something like this because we're not trying to offend anybody. We just wanted to gripe about being lumped into the raping, child molesting girlfriend drowning category all the time by the lifetime network he ate his last wife and she was next you know it just yeah i just wish they would be a little more even-handed is all did your wife watch that no she watches reality shows (gasps) oh i'm sensing a topic for next week's episode (laughs) all right good night thanks folks Ed Kits My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Sad but true.